Hello, I am Amal Vekatraman and this is Project 1 for CS50's Web Programming with Python and JavaScript. This is a book review site written in Flask and it allows users to search for books and write reviews for those books. In addition, the website also provides review data from Goodreads, which is a book review API, and also provides an API of its own for other developers to access book reviews written on this website. So let me first show you how to use the website. This is the home page where you can search for the book. But right now it tells me that I'm not logged in. I can still browse the books, but I need to log in in order to be able to post a review. I can still search for a book, let's just say Martian. And it'll return me all the books. And when I click on one of the books, I can see reviews that have already been written by other users, me. And I can try to write another review, but I cannot post it because I'm not logged in. Now I need to log in or register. So I'm going to show you how to register first. It's just any regular register form. You need to have a username, a full name, and you need to have a password which is at least eight characters long. So I'm going to do that real quick. And there, we're registered. Now we have to log in again. Now that we're logged in, we can search for another book. So let's just see. So for example, I get some books from Isaac Asimov and I want to see all the books written by him. I could just click on the author's name and I could see all of the books written by one of the authors. For example, now when I get to this book, I can write a review for the book. And I also have to select the number of stars, which can be either one star all the way to five stars. And I can then post. The review now appears as a five star review, and I can see my review. I also know when I posted this review. Oh yes, and you also cannot post multiple reviews for the same book. So if I try to post another review for this book here, it's not going to work. And just in case you're wondering, this also works with an ISBN. And you can still get the books. So this website also comes with an API so that other developers can use and access the review data that this website has. To use the API, you have to go to the website URL, which in this case is localhost, slash API, slash the ISBN number. Enter, and you get a JSON response that has the author of the book, the average score, ISBN, review count, title, and the year in which it was published. Keep in mind that this is all data from this website and not from Goodreads. One of the little features I added was the My Account feature. So if you click on your account name when you're logged in and you click on My Account, you go to a page where you know your full name that you're registered with, your username, how, how long you've been a member since, and how many reviews you've written. Alright, so here's where all the magic happens. This is the back end. So I'm just going to quickly walk you through what everything does. This is to import everything. This is uh, initialization, more initialization. Uh, this is the index route. Login, register, log out, and search. They're all obvious what they do. This is account for the My Account page. Uh, this is book to return the book page with all the reviews and the good review data and the place where you can post your own review. This is slash review, which allows the user to post the reviews, like the backend part of it, and also queries for reviews from the database. Uh, this is uh, the API part, which uh, when you give the ISBN number, it returns information about the book in a JSON format for other developers to integrate into their own web application. And here's a bit of the HTML. This is the layout.html file, which mostly just contains links and navbar. And uh, these are the three messages. You might have seen them when I used the web app. This is like the success, warning, and error messages that come on top. So I can just uh, plug in this value every time I render the template and it will work. Otherwise, it displays nothing. It's a neat little trick I like to use. This is the login.html file, index.html, book.html for the book, search.html, and this is the style sheet. A lot of styling involved, huh? Oh wait, I almost forgot to show you guys this, but this is the import.py file to import all of the books which were actually given to me in a CSV file from CS50 into the database. 
So all it does is just import libraries, uh, connects to the database, it reads to the file, and puts it into the database. The one neat thing I put was that I checked if the year is a digit, because the first line on the CSV is just uh, the text, ISBN title author year. So I don't want to put that, but year, just the word year, would not be a digit, so then it wouldn't work. Import was the first thing I did, and uh, I don't want to run it again, because it's going to change all the values in my database right now. But I do have a screen recording of me running it. Let's see it now. All right, that's CS50's web programming with Python and JavaScript, project one. Done. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.